Hey friends, welcome back to my coping corner. I am so glad that you're with me. In this coping corner series, we are going through uh, Janine Halloran's discovery deck of coping skills for kids. If you are interested in getting her newsletter or um, getting a deck of your own, there's a link below. Um, today we will be focusing on one processing coping skill and one movement coping skill. Now, as a little bit of a review, it's really important to remember why we're doing this. Coping skills are things that we learn in order to manage our anxiety, in order to manage our emotions, in order to manage our energy. Coping skills help get us through everyday circumstances and the more coping skills we have in our toolbox that work for us and our personality and the way that we process information, the easier it is to to ground ourselves, calm ourselves down, and deal with big emotions or scary events, um, or really anything else that happens in life. Um, so these are really important for kids, they're also important for adults, but this deck is geared towards use with children. And so, let's begin. So like I said, um, we are going to do one processing coping skill. When we like to think things over in order to calm down or to cope, that's that has to do with processing. And so our processing coping skill today is the power of yet. Maybe your kids are like me and they're really hard on themselves and they say things like, I don't know how to do this or I can't do this or this isn't working. Helping them learn to add yet to that sentence can help shift the way that they process the experience. So I don't understand yet. I don't get it yet. I can't do this yet is a very different way of experiencing the situation. So for instance, I made cookies yesterday and the first batch was terrible. I mismeasured the baking soda. I burnt, I baked the entire back, batch at once and burnt the whole thing. And I internalized that as I can't bake. I can't make cookies. And later in the day, I, my husband reminded me, you just haven't gotten it right yet. Why don't you try again? And so that night I started over and guess what? I tried some new things. I did a couple of things differently. I didn't bake the whole batch at the same time. I set the timer for less time and I got it right. It was that understanding that just because I can't do it the first time or the tenth time doesn't mean I can't do it. I just haven't been able to do it yet. So the power of now our second coping skill is a movement coping skill. It's when we need to release our energy. And this one is a great one to do in all sorts of situations. Maybe your kid is a fidgeter like I am, and even when they're doing a quiet activity, they need to do something. This is a movement activity that they can do at school, that they can do at the dinner table, that they can really do anywhere in the grocery store. And it's this. It's taking your hands and pushing your fingers together and then just making different shapes with your hands, but using the tension. So you're really pressing and then moving your hands. So I like to do it in kind of like a wave motion um, or if I'm do, doing it during a, uh, during a meeting, I'll do it under the table and just do this. Um, but the pressure along with the movement of the hands helps to release some energy out. So that's one movement coping skill. Now, like I said earlier, we're going to be going through a lot of these. Look back to see the 
uh, coping skills that we've already gone through and click the link below if you're interested in getting your own deck or in subscribing to Janine's newsletter. Thanks for watching friends and I hope that all of these coping skills are super helpful for you and for your children. Love you guys. Bye.